All right, folks. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are, uh, and welcome to this uh, webinar. Uh, my name is uh, Nico Kabar. I'm a solution architect at Tigera. And uh, in today's webinar, we'll be discussing uh, all things on about Calico on Rancher. Um, so again, thank you for, for uh, kind of joining us today. Um, the, this, this webinar will be recorded uh, and uh, will be posted uh, later on. Um, and we we'll, should have some time towards the end for some Q&A. Uh, the, the format of the webinar will be, um, you know, I will not bore you with slides. We'll just discuss kind of the main um, uh, key design consideration from a networking perspective when you're running um, uh, Rancher, uh, specifically um, the Calico on Rancher and various uh, network uh, considerations and um, best practices. And we will also have some time for uh, a quick demo uh, around, around the you know, configuring Calico on Rancher. Uh, so a bit about myself real quick. Um, I've been with uh, Tigera for eight months now, um, previously at Docker and before that at Cisco. So pretty much my whole kind of tenure in, in the industry has been around containers and networking and Kubernetes and cloud. So um, I, I truly enjoy kind of working uh, around all these kind of topics and uh, especially, you know, uh, what we're doing here at Calico around um, some of the cool technologies and uh, solutions that we're, we're, we're building for uh, helping uh, users and customers kind of build uh, the best and most secure uh, networks on, um, um, you know, as part of their Kubernetes journey or their cloud journey. So uh, enough about me. Um, as I said, we'll, we'll, we'll do a quick overview on Calico and Tigera. If you're new to this, um, to Calico and Tigera, we'll, we'll do kind of a refresher. Um, we'll discuss kind of the power of, of Calico and Rancher um, and uh, the network design consideration when, when you're building out your Rancher clusters. And we'll do a deployment walkthrough slash demo. Uh, and we'll leave some time towards the end for Q&A. As I mentioned, uh, this webinar will be recorded and it will be posted um, on, on Tegera forward slash events and the past, past events uh, section there. Um, so uh, let's get started. So if you haven't heard of, um, of uh, Project Calico before, uh, Project Calico is an open source project that started pretty much uh, when Kubernetes started to kind of help fuel uh, all things networking and kind of address the networking uh, aspect of uh, Kubernetes workloads. Uh, we actually helped define the CNI spec um, and were widely adopted um, in production and at scale. Uh, not only did we help with um, both the, the CNI spec as well as the policy spec then uh, Kubernetes the policy, but also we're uh, involved from the beginning uh, around kind of launch of Istio and Spiffy, uh, among other uh, projects, open source projects out there. Um, uh, both from an open source perspective as well as some of our uh, commercial uh, products, we're uh, pretty much run anywhere you have Kubernetes. So whether you're using a, a public cloud offering like EKS, GKE, AKS, or IBM ITS, uh, Calico has been powering um, the, uh, the, the policy for and has been picked and chosen by all four uh, managed Kubernetes services to, uh, to, uh, to power the policy enforcement um, and is, uh, is, is launched as an add-on when, when, when you do that uh, for all these um, uh, great services offered by those uh, clouds. Not only that, for uh, for uh, you know a whole lot of other Kubernetes uh, distributions uh, like OpenShift, um, Mirantis, Docker Enterprise, as well as Rancher, kind of the core of our discussion today, you have either the option or it comes by default where you can have a supported mechanism to run Calico um, in those environments. So whether you're you're just getting started with Kubernetes or you're you've been running Kubernetes. Uh, Calico has been uh, trusted by um, uh, those services to, to run workloads uh, at scale today. Uh, not only that, but also we have a, a you know, whole lot of uh, users um, that are using uh, Calico today. Uh, we know of more than, I believe, 150,000 uh, clusters out there today that are 
powered by Calico, uh, but also were trusted by um, a long list of um, Fortune 500 enterprises that are using Calico and Calico Enterprise today. Uh, you can see some of the names that are listed um, here uh, that are trusting us with uh, using Calico uh, at scale, whether they're on-prem deployments for Kubernetes or public deployments of, of, of Kubernetes. So uh, that's basically a you know, quick summary of uh, what Calico uh, is and what Calico Enterprise is. Um, you know, uh, from, from a partnership perspective, we've been uh, closely working with Rancher um, uh, to deliver uh, a secure and performant uh, and scalable uh, networking solution on top of Rancher, where you're using, whether you're using uh, RKE um, um, uh, or, or any other variation of Rancher there. Uh, so we'll kind of discuss kind of the, the, the pros of, of uh, choosing Calico as an option uh, to power your rancher cluster and, you know, what consideration you're going to have to look into and how to do that. Uh, that's kind of the core of the, the, the discussion today. But know that we work closely with ranchers um, and running uh, Calico, uh, Calico Enterprise on Rancher is a supported um, a solution today, uh, as we have actually a lot of customers who are doing that uh, today, and they're doing it at scale. So, uh, if we take a step back, you know, if you're just getting started, in, you know, with Rancher um, um, uh, today, you probably uh, at some point throughout your your design uh, process, you come to a point where you have to kind of make a decision. Uh, around the CNI options, uh, make a you know make a choice on which option you want to choose. Um, although Calico is not only a CNI option, but that's pretty much the foundation of what we do. Is starting as as a CNI, but we build a lot more, especially in the in the enterprise solution. But um, just to remind you that in in if you know if you go to Rancher today, if you go to their site, you want to launch um, uh, 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 you know uh, an RTE cluster. Uh, you have um, a four supported out of the box solution. Um, the default being Canal, which is uh, Flannel and uh, Calico. So Flannel for networking and Calico for policy enforcement. And you have Flannel, Weave, and of course Calico. Uh, this is also a good summary uh, from, from, uh, ran uh, from Rancher's docs, highlighting um, some of the key um, it's highlighting some of the key uh, 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 features and um, you know network models and encryption features, uh, you know, in comparing them for um, across all four um, all four options. But to summarize uh, this comparison here is that you know if you're if you're deciding on on a, on the CNI, uh, there's a lot of factors to kind of consider. One being uh, if you know the network model that you wanna you wanna use um, for um, for a lot of customers that I'm dealing with today and working with closely, uh, some are actually uh, uh, want a, a non um, you know more native unencapsulated layer three network for their Kubernetes clusters. That way, they have complete um, uh, uh, control over over the networking and uh, they have uh, less overhead um, and that kind of drives more performance, more bandwidth. Uh, of course, it comes uh, at the cost of additional uh, integration and um, design uh, kind of process to ensure that is they're going through an unencapsulated kind of more routed approach, uh, they're doing so in, in a way that would scale <coughs> with their environment, with their underlay. So that's, one option that Calico uh, provide uh, is around kind of the, the choice around the networking model. And we'll discuss that in the, in the next slide. The second is around uh, routing. Um, and here, uh, what I mean by route distribution is around uh, ensuring that uh, the, the, the pod networking uh, itself, is it, is it locally significant from a routing perspective to only the cluster, or is it something that needs to be distributed and needs to be integrated with the underlay? Uh, third, from a network policy perspective, ensuring that when you choose a CNI, is it going to take care of um, enabling you to use uh, Kubernetes network policies or not? Because it is, um, it, it is a responsibility of the CNI to enforce network policies. Uh, so Kubernetes, from an API perspective, allows you to define them. 
but relies on the CNI to actually enforce them. So Calico here um, can, uh, can actually um, uh, enforce those policies for you. Um, from, you know, from, I don't know, the, the, uh, the full mesh or, you know, how, how the, how the different nodes can talk to each other and how the raw distribution talks to each other. Uh, that's kind of basically what mesh here, uh, uh, is all about is how you define the connectivity and raw distribution across the different nodes within Kubernetes. Uh, from a storage perspective, a data storage perspective, how it, you know, Calico or the CNI interacts with, um, uh, with the uh, with uh, uh, the data store being you know the two options being uh, either uh, you know connecting directly to etcd or uh, uh, talking uh, through the Kubernetes API uh, directly, um, and of course we have uh, the inc encryption options as well as um, you know ingress and egress policies uh, defining here. Um, actually, I think there's a typo here. We the, with the latest launch of three fifteen, we actually do have encryption. Uh, using WireGuard in the background um, as a method of encrypting pod-to-pod uh, -pod, uh, uh, networking. So actually we need to address that. I'll probably raise the PR uh, after this discussion because it, we just launched 315 this week and it does have uh, that support. As well as we mentioned the policies um, uh, enforcement. So uh, to sum up kind of this this um, this slide here is that is, if you're if you're you know, deciding on a CNI based on either your application uh, requirements from a networking perspective, as well as your kind of your, your infrastructure or, uh, infrastructure network uh, requirements. Uh, those are some of the key areas to consider. And that's a good summary that uh, is uh, provided for you by, uh, by Rancher. And all of these are actually supported options. So you only, you don't have to manage them on your own. They're supported uh, options uh, by Rancher itself. So, and we'll kind of talk about that in a bit. In, in one thing I wanted to highlight is that uh, both Calico open source as well as Calico Enterprise are supported um, solutions that can run on Rancher and we'll discuss that in, in, um, in detail. Uh, when you pick Calico as an option when you're deploying your cluster and the clustering configuration file, you'll get the Calico open source. And but we'll talk today how you can actually enable Calico Enterprise and why would why would you need that uh, if there's a if there's a need for that? Um, why would you do so? So and how? So um, let's kind of go through a list of uh, what we believe is you know the key attributes that uh, make using uh, Calico with Rancher, a, you know, very powerful combination, right? I mean, a lot of you are, are, are probably, um, and feel free to kind of chime in with chat, um, but a lot of you are already kind of believers or users of, of Rancher's, the Rancher today. Uh, so you, I'm not gonna, you know, spend some time on why Rancher. I mean, there's a lot of really uh, cool stuff that uh, Rancher both as a, as a product and as a company are doing, uh, but kind of the core uh, of the discussion here is like why Calico on Rancher. So um, the, the first thing is around, you know, if you come from a networking background or you want to have a more networking centric uh, approach to uh, uh, manage and configure uh, networking, Calico provides Calico Cuddle, which is a simple, easy to use tool uh, to manage, configure, view all things related to networking um, uh, from a single tool that, you know, you can configure it with, um, to access your, your Rancher cluster that's easy to use. Uh, that way you, you can actually have full visibility into all things networking from a single tool. The second, uh, attribute is kind of providing you a various networking options. We kind of discussed early on is, is at some point is once you've even, once you pick the CNI, you have a couple of options. Um, you know, once you pick Calc, you have a couple of options with how you want your networking model to work. So there's a lot of factors in that. And I'll, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, um, uh, there's a lot of really good resources on which one to pick. But uh, it boils down to two buckets. One is kind of using an encapsulated overlay-based network, and the other is using no overlay and non-encapsulated. So uh, Calico provides two options for encapsulation, either VXLAN for uh, Layer 2 and IPNIP for Layer 3. Uh, encapsulation. There's pros and cons for each, so there is definitely a uh, you know something to kind of consider. Um, and of course, if you go with a choice of non-encapsulation, there's also a um, you know we use you know uh, uh, a simplified flat layer three 
uh, where you can integrate your cluster with your VPC routing or with your, if you're kind of on-prem with, uh, with BGP and uh, peer directly, that way your pods are just treated like any other uh, workload where their, their traffic is routed natively so you can continue using your you know, existing tooling around uh, management and, um, and kind of network visibility and so forth. Of course, if you uh, pick that option, which actually you have a lot of customers who are using that, um, there are a couple of peering options, you know, to create a full uh, mesh or to kind of peer with the top of rack, to peer with dual uh, tours, so two top of racks uh, for high availability and failover, or, or you kind of using, if you have a hundred or more nodes, that probably makes more sense to actually use a route reflector that we even provide for you. So you can actually peer directly with the route reflector so that it kind of decreases uh, the amount of, of um, of advertisement uh, by by taking that route. So there's, you know, if, if the, the more simple approach is to use encapsulation, to use overlays, then that way it's kind of everything is contained from a networking perspective. However, for scale and simplicity from a networking perspective and more visibility, a lot of users are choosing uh, to go more native and peer with the underlay. And even with that, uh, the case, there's a, a few options on how you do that based on your environment and requirements, of course. Um, uh, from a network policy enforcement, which is a huge, um, you know, uh, uh, area around, you know, why, why uh, users use Calco, uh, we provide, you know, you know, Calco provides a mechanism to enforce not only Kubernetes network policies, but also we extend it using what we call a Calico network policy, uh, where you have a whole long list of um, advanced functionality, advanced features, both in the open source product as well as in the commercial product around tiering and DNS-based policy and global uh, policies in both ingress and egress direction, as well as integration with Istio and Envoy to provide you a mechanism to create a single policy uh, that defines not only layer three, layer four uh, based rules, but also all the way to layer seven. So you can actually define in a single policy which uh, namespaces or which applications can talk to which applications but not only that, uh, also allow or, or deny uh, layer seven uh, actions like HTTP gets or, or, or um, you know, uh, or puts or whatever, all in the same policy where the L3, L4 policy will be uh, implemented or enforced by Calico and the layer seven policy will be implemented or enforced by Envoy. So that's a really cool feature that we have as well. And you can use uh, when you run Calico on Rancher. Uh, of course, you have uh, various uh, options uh, for uh, uh, coup proxy modes. So in terms of like translating service to pod, um, uh, uh, basically uh, data paths there and, and um, um, the two options that are available today are uh, IP tables as a default and then you have a more performant approach using IPVS. So both of those options are um, uh, are, are there for you when you use uh, Calico. But from a data plane options, you know, when we're talking about the data plane of, of, of pod to pod, uh, the default is IP tables and we've done an extensive set of um, uh, enhancements and uh, optimization for using IP tables with IP sets. But also uh, we recently added support for eBPF, which is a more performance and in, in, in more modern way to um, uh, to uh, 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 basically uh, enable a more performant and more, uh, uh, you know, a faster data plane that uses less CPU uh, per gigabit uh, uh, throughput uh, and, and actually allows you to, to optimize your, your bandwidth more efficiently and utilize it um, uh, more efficiently, a lot more than IP tables. So that's something that would be, uh, you know, uh, another option uh, for you to, to use as a data plane option with, with Calico. And not to forget that uh, the only available and supported uh, Windows CNI out there is, uh, is Calico. So whether you're talking about Linux with two options, IP tables or VPF for data plane or Windows uh, with uh, host networking uh, service, uh, Calico can be kind of the, the, um, uh, the, the uh, the CNI there, regardless of the type of workloads and regardless of uh, the option for a data plane there. So uh, this is a good summary of why choosing, uh, why choosing, I mean, it's a very brief summary of why choosing uh, Calico. Um, 
uh, as as a CNI and more uh, for your for your uh, rancher clusters. Uh, I'm seeing that there could be some uh, chats in the Q and A. Um, I, my my uh, my peer Andy, um, you know, is is helping me. Uh, but if there's anything that's unanswered, I'll make sure that we answer it towards the end of this discussion. So let's talk about a couple of Kubernetes um, network considerations and uh, that a lot of our users kind of you know uh, look into and kind of uh, go through as they're designing their uh, Kubernetes cluster or they're even migrating their Kubernetes clusters. So believe it or not, we're working with a handful of customers who um, have already been running Kubernetes for a while, but they've hit either um, some limitations or some issues and they want to migrate to use Calico and they're looking for a more optimized, more performant, more scalable uh, solution. So um, some of the questions that you can uh, are probably facing, how do you choose a pod sided, right? Uh, how big should it be? Uh, and will it be private or extended hierarchy? Uh, and how to, do you choose a service side? So just to kind of uh, answer those kind of questions or kind of give you some guidelines on how to answer them. Uh, uh, let's start with the service side. So the service side is actually not managed at all by the CNI because it's more of a virtual side. Uh, that is managed purely by uh, 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 Kube, uh, um, uh, uh, Kubernetes itself, the Kube uh, API server. Uh, and therefore, uh, choosing a service cider, you know, you need to provide something that would um, allow you to, you know, to scale with the number of services that you uh, intend to have. So, you know, starting, you know, doing the slash 16 should be giving you what more than 65,000 or something, which is probably more than what you're going to be running. Uh, but uh, it needs to be non-conflicting with the pod side. Uh, but the responsibility of handing service uh, I, uh, service VIPs to services is not the responsibility of the CNI. And therefore, it's something that is not really a configuration option even for Calc or any other CNI. Now, going back to the first question, the question around the, the pod side, uh, of course, this is, you know, every pod um, is going to receive an IP address. And, uh, you typically, I believe the Today, you know, the, the, the soft limit on the number of pods per node is 110. I believe that's kind of the default. So you kind of have to use uh, some logic into understanding the type of workloads that are going to be running, how many pods you expect, or how, how, how many pods you want to actually limit it to. If it is 110, so multiply that by the number of nodes that you intend to, um, to run, and uh, then you'll get at least a good estimate. Of course, you know, starting with a slash 16 uh, will be a great uh, starting point that's, you know, giving you um, enough, uh, enough uh, 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 runway there for the number of pods. Uh, but it's really important to remember that once you pick a pod side, really you can't change it uh, because it's one of those things that is going to be extremely difficult to change, it, especially if you're running workloads. Um, so uh, it's one of those things that you need to kind of consider ahead of time. Now, Calico itself does give you an option that after the fact that you, um, uh, you know, you, you uh, decide on the pod side that you can create what we call IP pools that are, you, you know, that would allow you to pick different uh, pools of or slices of of the uh, of the uh, of the cider for different um, for different purposes. So let's say you wanna. Uh, give a, uh, a set of IPs from a specific uh, subnet uh, to a specific set of pods running on a specific area within your, your cluster, uh, whether it is a different, uh, you know, uh, um, a different uh, cluster, or, sorry, a different track or a different type of workload or a different namespace. So there, you know, uh, Calico itself can provide you a, a, a unique way of uh, selective and more uh, advanced um, mapping of uh, pods uh, to namespaces or to where they're, you know, located within the data center and so forth. So it's not the end of the world if you uh, need to kind of extend the, the pod cider. Uh, if you're not, especially if you're not using, um, if you are using Calico, it's not the end of the world because you can actually add more IP pools. But the main pool that you want to actually dedicate for all things, the default, the all things, uh, um, you know, uh, all pods kind of consume from it needs to be large enough uh, so they don't have to actually think about um uh, changing it, uh, it's it's a difficult. I believe some folks have done it, but it's a very difficult process, especially if you're running uh, applications. Uh, it's very difficult to kind of switch that off. Now, will it be private or extended audible? This kind of depends on your on the network model that you choose. So, if it's encapsulated, it can be private. So you can choose something that overlaps technically with your 
uh, existing uh, network, but if it's not, it needs to be, you know, if it's extended interoperable, if it's uh, unencapsulated uh, network approach, uh, that means that you need to make sure that your request is either that is unused by your on-delay because otherwise it will be, you know, conflicts, you know, that from an IP address management, if it conflicts with uh, something in your on-delay, uh, there could be some routing, uh, black holing there um, and issues uh, with that. So um, both of these kind of options are things that you're going to have to consider and have an option to configure in the, in the, um, uh, in the Rancher uh, YAML file. So um, uh, as you can see here, the cluster side and the service cluster IP range needs to be defined here. So other uh, network considerations uh, as well to, to consider with uh, which Calico data plans do I choose? Uh, I mean, the default is IP tables. It is performant uh, unless you have, you know, thousands and thousands of, cluster, uh, of services and, um, um, you know, you, and there is some, um, some need to kind of uh, to uh, scale by even beyond those you know thousands of, of services there. Um, it is the default, as I mentioned. I, I guess more than ninety, maybe ninety five percent of our users or customers today use it. Uh, we we enhanced it. We optimized how we used uh, the the data plan, the IP tables data plane. But no, the other options that you have like EBVF. Um, I think we talked about network encapsulation again. Um, if if um, encapsulation, of course, it's gonna have an impact on throughput. Uh, it might not be as significant as uh, some people, you know, uh, um, say it is, but it will have an impact on on uh, on throughput. Um, it kind of boils down to a you know if you want a in a private you know, overlay-based encapsulated network or not. Um, and that will define if you need an, you know, to, to, to pick an encapsulation uh, method, which, whether it is VXLAN or IPNIP. For example, uh, I think this was asked last time, uh, like if you're running Rancher on Azure, for example, um, or um, even if you're running uh, the native link on AKS, uh, IPMP is a protocol that is actually disabled by default within Azure networking. Therefore, your only uh, options either go, um, uh, you know, encapsulated VXLAN or unencapsulated. Uh, so a lot of our users use VXLAN natively on, on Azure. So that's another point that I wanted to raise. Uh, we talked about the initial IP uh, pool cider. Um, um, and I kind of talked about this kind of sub question is, is what I defined earlier as if you need some selective IP, um, IP allocation based on where the pod is running or, you know, physically or, or you know, which, uh, which uh, availability zone or whatnot, uh, you can ha do some pretty advanced stuff with, uh, with Calico itself. Uh, finally, I wanted to kind of touch on um, uh, uh, two items, which is initial IP block uh, size, which is the block of IPs dedicated for every node in the cluster. So uh, Calico does very smart IP block allocation. So um, it, it assigns a slash 26 by default. Uh, so that gives enough uh, IPs uh, for, uh, um, for um, like 128 IPs, I believe, uh, for um, uh, uh, the number of pods that can run on a single uh, node. Uh, and the reason why we do that is to minimize um, the routing uh, uh, and kind of advertisement. So if you have a slash 26, we do summarization. So um, if you need more than that, you can configure it for Calico um, and the block size would be different. Here we're talking about the number, the, the, uh, the, 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 num the subnet itself, the pool size uh, per node. Uh, so it's not cluster wise, it's per node. And finally, if you should disable um, not outgoing, again, if you are using a uh, an overlay, you probably need that uh, because you were going to have to do some natting to kind of leave the cluster uh, and get back to the cluster. Uh, but if you're doing something that's more native, um, um, then you probably need, you can disable um, NAT because you can, you don't have to actually NAT any traffic. So uh, I summarized some of those items that I discussed um, in, in this GitHub uh, page, which you know, I'll be using, and you can go always reference, and there's some configuration samples there. Uh, probably I'll, I'll add it in the, in the chat in a bit. Um, oops. 
I'll add it in the chat in a bit. But a, you know, for the next um, 25 minutes or so, uh, hopefully in 20 minutes so we can leave some room for questions, uh, I want to walk you through uh, real quick, uh, initially, how to configure Calico uh, with, uh, with, uh, with Rancher as a default CNI. And then I'm also going to walk you through, hopefully if we have time, on how to use Calico Enterprise on Rancher. So let's sit, you know, I, I wanted to use an example here. So, you know, want to launch two clusters, one using Calico Open Source and one using Calico Enterprise. Um, just remember that if you launch it with Calico Open Source, you cannot switch to Enterprise. And the reason why is when you launch it with Calico uh, Open Source, you're basically telling Rancher to manage the CNI for you. And therefore, uh, from a functionality perspective, you can move to Calico Enterprise, but basically, um, because it's a default uh, setting, which CNI to, to use, therefore it is, uh, it, you can be in a bad position down the road if you uh, basically deploy the enterprise functionalities while Rancher thinks and continues to manage the CNI, uh, you know, throughout upgrades and so forth. So uh, our recommendation here is that to pick one or the other and go with that flow. So if you think you're going to go with Calc Open Source, go with that and we'll show you that. If you want to go with Calc Enterprise, we'll, we'll show you that as well. So uh, the, the demo design is like just uh, launch an RTE cluster, um, uh, two nodes uh, with the pod side of 1010 slash 16 and the server side of 1020 slash 16. So that gives us enough uh, IPs and VIPs for both, you know, uh, for a large number of pods and services. Uh, for encapsulation, I, uh, you know, let's use IP and IP and use it for cross subnet, which is a setting that allows you, you know, if you're running, for example, like I will be on, on AWS and the nodes, the worker nodes, the Rancher RTE worker nodes are actually, some of which are on the same layer two subnet, then you don't need to do any encapsulation. If the uh, 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 transpond subnets, so there are different availability zones, then Calico selectively establishes those IP and IP tunnels so that you can do routing uh, and encapsulation only is used if, if that is the scenario. So that way you're kind of, you avoid doing an encapsulation um, if the pods are talking within the same uh, layer two subnet of the nodes themselves. Uh, we're gonna use the default block size of 26 as we described and, you, uh, and enable uh, outgoing uh, NAT because we're using encapsulation. Um, so maybe I can just walk you through, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, put this uh, link here. So maybe you can feel free to kind of um, uh, chime in in chat or use it. Here we go. So the, as I walk you through this, one second. As I walk you through this, um, uh, you can see here all the things that I described are, are listed here. Um, I have a Rancher um, server that is running uh, currently on AWS. This is kind of indifferent wherever you run it. Um, and you can see here that when you launch a a, um, a cluster, you can actually use, you know, either YAML um, to kind of define the cluster config. Uh, that's what I've kind of done here. So when you create a cluster, you can go through it. Um, and uh, for me, I did uh, just add uh, edit in YAML. And you can see here that the YAML that I um, uh, created, I updated a couple of things. Hopefully you guys can see me. I updated a couple of things. Um, one thing to note here is, of course, the networking uh, plugin. Uh, that's the first thing. So if you use a plugin um, uh, option of Calico, then Rancher will use Calico uh, and it will deploy Calico as the CNI. Uh, and in this case, I did, um, uh, if, uh, uh, you can see here that I updated as well, uh, given that my requirement was to use the 10, 10, um, 1010 uh, slash 16 for the pod side and 1020 slash 16 uh, for the service side. So those are the two things that I actually updated in the YAML config file for my cluster. Um, and uh, I also updated the cluster DNS server to use to reflect uh, the non-default value. I think the default value was 1042, um, if I'm not mistaken. So if you change the uh, service cluster range or the uh, the pod side of range, you need, and you need to make sure that you're updating the, uh, the DNS, um, uh, uh, DNS server IP because it's going to be static um, for, uh, for your cluster. So just for the interest of time, I literally just took this uh, 
configuration file, again, just to remind you, um, just enabled Calico as the Calico as the plugin. And for my uh, design, I, um, I updated those configs to reflect the CIDR of the pod and the service CIDR and the DNS uh, IP. And I uploaded that here and I launched the cluster. And by default, you're gonna see that, oops, network issue. Of course, uh -oh. it was just working. I uh, apologize for that. Let's give it a minute. I don't know what's going on uh, here. But that's basically, um, that's all you need really to launch uh, Calico on, um, on, on Rancher, Calico uh, open source. So this, this is very good. I apologize for that. So it was working just now. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, so uh, let's talk about you know, the difference between um, um, if you do pick uh, uh, um, uh, Calco Enterprise, and uh, we don't have enough time to kind of describe the advantages there, but know that the, the CNI itself and the policy enforcement is pretty much the same for open source and, and enterprise. Uh, there's just the, the value in enterprises around, um, around um, some enterprise capabilities around management, around uh, policy tiering, previewing, staging, um, DNS-based policies, visibility, flow logs. So there's a long list of, um, of uh, 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 differences between, um, let me show you something since this is, uh, this is not working. I don't know what's going on. Um, so if you uh, go to projectcalc.org uh, and you're curious about what you, What's the difference between Calco and Calco Enterprise? This is a very good, uh, uh, you know, summarization. Again, the core of it, we're proud of Calco. You know, um, open source CNI. Um, you know, we're you know we're driving a lot of innovation there, but we're also driving a lot of innovation for um, from an enterprise uh, functionalities. You can see there's a long list of uh, capabilities um, that that Calco Enterprise kind of uh, uh, provides for for your enterprise needs. Uh, this is not fun. Okay, this is not good. Uh, so the key thing to remember on, um, uh, the th key thing to remember in terms of the requirements uh, for a Calico Enterprise is that um, you need to have, you know, a, a, a standard Calico Enterprise requirements uh, that are defined, uh, well-documented, uh, Coop Cuddle access to um, to Calico um, to sorry to the RTA cluster that you're creating. Uh, the you know if you're a customer you're trying uh, uh, Calico Enterprise you, you you know we provide you some credentials and a license uh, that you need to to provision uh, Calico Enterprise on top of Rancher. Um, and of course then you know, a Rancher server if you're using that approach to provision additional clusters. And the key thing to remember here is this, uh, what I'm about to show you is basically you need to, you need to launch the, uh, the cluster itself with no plugin. And that's really key. Um, so that's the you know, first key thing. And the other thing is basically the ability to provision uh, persistent volumes, which is uh, needed for Calico Enterprise because we, we store a bunch of um, all the traffic logs there and you can search them and understand what's going on. But um, if we go back to the, the two configuration files that I have for you, one is using sample um, um, uh, open source uh, Calico. Uh, so you can see here that the network plugin is Calico. But if you wanna do um, Calico Enterprise, you need to launch the cluster with uh, uh, the network plug plugin is none. Um, I wish I can show you this, but basically I, where I left my, my cluster is and what I wanted to kind of demo is you're going to launch a cluster. It's going to actually be in a, in a bad state because it does not have a CNI and that's okay. You're going to have, you're going to need coop cuddle access. You can actually uh, access the control plane, but um, then you'll be able to install Calico Enterprise, the full stack that includes the CNI itself and more. By enabling the plugin none, that means you're telling Rancher not to actually manage the CNI for 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 you, and that's what's a requirement if you're uh, if you're installing Calico Enterprise. 
Uh, similarly, I mean, uh, the, the, uh, I don't think they're, they're basically, I don't think there's any, even the, the configs there um, for the service side there, as well as the pod side that are there for you, uh, I don't think um, they're really uh, going to take effect if you're not uh, launching a, or you're not uh, using one of the default four CNIs. So this is kind of becomes a more of a, you know, a, a, um, a, a you know, mute uh, point uh, in configuration wise. So I launched a secondary uh, cluster here um, and um, I got it to a state where, again, I cannot see it, but uh, good news is that I already have, um, I already have a, uh, I already have access to the cluster. So you can see here uh, that hopefully you guys can see my screen. Okay, this is not good. Um, this is not good. All right, uh, this is ruining my demo for, for you. Uh, if you give me a second, I might try to fix it, but given we don't have a lot of time, maybe let's take a minute. Uh, I'm trying to check something real quick and then I'll get back to you because I, this was just working like 20 minutes ago. Yeah, just, uh, just checking something real quick. Uh, so you can see here, uh, this is my cluster uh, that, the, you know, the open source version will be launched and we should be good to go. Uh, there shouldn't be any issues. But the enterprise version, because we are launching it without the CNI, therefore, um, we should uh, have a, you know, an error here that it's not ready, which is expected. Um, and that is, um, you know, expected. And then once we have that, um, once we have that, then we can actually go through, uh, we can go through the process to install Calico Enterprise on it. Um, and that process is pretty trivial. Uh, you just need a, you know, a handful of uh, steps. I apologize, I'm a bit all over right now, but uh, just due to the issue with that um, access. So, um, So in order to install Calico Enterprise on um, on uh, Rancher, really you go to um, follow um, the pretty kind of straightforward, uh, detailed um, uh, uh, documentation around this by basically creating a storage class uh, and applying the operator based uh, deployment for the you know for Calico Enterprise, uh, providing the license. Um, Oh, sorry, the, the pull secret to pull the images uh, and adjusting any custom resources that are uh, needed to be adjusted and then uh, deploying um, uh, the, the license itself. And um, that, will, that would run Calico as a CNI. So you can actually um, you know, uh, use it as a CNI. It will do the policy enforcement for you as well as all the, all the uh, Calico enterprise functionalities as well. Uh, given that we only have 10 minutes, uh, I was hoping to actually go through a, a you know, proper you know, installation uh, um, uh, demo uh, and beyond that, but just know that everything that I was gonna do is kind of listed here in this uh, repo. Uh, so really it's um, once you launch the, the, once you launch the uh, Rancher cluster uh, and you can basically go ahead and follow uh, the, the document uh, here, um, you know, you'll be able to kind of get Calico uh, uh, Enterprise installed on, on Rancher. So with that, uh, maybe we can actually have some, um, uh, you know, leave some time for questions. I apologize, I did not get really uh, uh, enough time to, to run through the installation that probably needs another 15 minutes or so, but uh, maybe I'll, I'll prioritize questions for now and then uh, 